Summary of the English Patient by Michael Ondatya Hannah stands up in the yard of a villa near the orchard and walks toward the house. She walks through the kitchen and up the dark stairs to a garden-themed bedroom in the back of the house. When Hannah walks into the room, the badly burned man in the bed turns to look at her. She gives him a bath every four days, letting water drip on his open cuts that are bleeding. The guy, only known as the English patient, tells Hannah a story about the desert while she works. He says that he fell from the sky while on fire and that the Bedouin, an Arab group that lives in the desert, saved his life and carried him out of the desert. Hannah reads to the English patient a number of books from the villa's library, including his own copy of Herodotus's The Histories. They are the only people living in the house in the last days of World War II. The house in Italy had been used by the Allies as a makeshift hospital. When the other nurses and doctors moved the patients north, Hannah insisted on staying behind with the English patient, who was not stable enough to move. The war has done almost all it can to destroy the house. The building has been hit by mortars many times, and there are bombs and mines everywhere, making many of the rooms dangerous to enter. A man named Caravaggio with wrapped hands has been staying at the military hospital in Rome for almost four months. He overhears a group of doctors talking about a nurse and her patient in a house to the north, so he stops to ask the nurse's name. The woman, Hannah, has shell shock and wouldn't leave the house because of her patient, a badly burned man with no memory who was thought to be English. The doctors say that the war in Europe is over and that they can no longer make Hannah or anyone else do anything. When Caravaggio gets to the villa, he quietly walks into the house and kneels down next to Hannah, like an uncle. Hannah is taken aback. This man has come all this way to see her. He was a friend of her late father, Patrick, and she has known him for a long time. Hannah says that they need to get more food if Caravaggio is to stay at the house. Hannah knows where they can steal some chickens if Caravaggio is willing to help. I've lost my nerve, he says while putting up his bandaged hands. The Allies took advantage of Caravaggio's skills as an Italian and sent him to steal important papers and maps. However, the Germans caught him, and they almost cut off his hands. One night, when Hannah has left the English patient, she goes downstairs, takes the cover off an old piano, and starts to play. As she plays, a storm comes in and there are flashes of lightning in the sky. Hannah sees that two soldiers, one of whom is wearing a cap, have come into the room and turned on the lights. An Indian sapper named Kip, who is wearing the turban, sets up a tent near the villa's yard. Hardy, the other man, works in a nearby town. The men were sent into the area to look for bombs and landmines. They know that musical instruments are often used to hide bombs and mines. There isn't a bomb in the piano at the house, but there are a lot of other things. Hannah is interested in Kip's dark skin, so she watches him move around the land and defuse bombs left behind by the Germans. One day, Hannah hears Kip shouting in a field near the house. She goes there and finds him standing with his arms in the air, holding up two wires. He says it is a trick bomb, and to defuse it, he needs Hannah to hold the wires. Kip says that Hannah should tape the lines to the tree so she can leave. He isn't sure how this bomb is wired, so she shouldn't stay there. Hannah says no, and Kip is able to stop the bomb from going off, but he is very scared. They could have been killed, but Hannah doesn't seem to care much about her life, which Kip doesn't understand. After that, Hannah falls asleep on Kip's chest, and Kip sits awake, mad at Hannah for making him responsible for her life. Hannah will soon start going to Kip's tent at night. She knows that Kip loves her, even though he doesn't need her like the English patient does. Kip thinks she is remarkable. Before the 20th century, not many people were interested in the desert, the English patient tells Hannah. By the early 1900s, European men were exploring and mapping the desert. They found old cave paintings and signs of lost cultures. In 1930, the English patient went into the desert to look for Zerzura, an old city in the Gilf Kabir. The English man and his friend, Madox, and the other European explorers were nationless among the native groups in the desert. In 1936, 
Englishman Geoffrey Clifton and his wife Catherine joined the English patient's trip. Geoffrey was a pilot and had worked with scientists from Britain. The English patient and Catherine fell in love quickly in the desert, but Catherine was afraid that Geoffrey would go mad if he found out, so she ended the relationship as quickly as it began. One day, Caravaggio tells Hannah about a Hungarian desert traveler named Laszlo Almasy. In the early days of the war, Almasy led German spies across the desert. Caravaggio thinks that the English patient is actually Almasy. Even though Hannah thinks this is crazy, Caravaggio gives the English patient a mix of morphine and alcohol to get him to talk. Caravaggio asks the English patient about 1942, and the English patient says that he had just arrived in Cairo and was heading back into the desert. Maddox had left a plane there, and the English patient had to go get Catherine from the Cave of Swimmers, where he had left her after Geoffrey's murder-suicide attempt. Geoffrey tried to crash his plane into the English patient to kill Catherine, himself, and the English patient. Geoffrey was the only one who died in the crash, though. He didn't hit the English patient at all, and Catherine, a guest on the plane, was badly hurt. The English patient had no choice but to leave Catherine and go get help, but no one would listen to him, so he had to go back alone. Now, years later, he found Catherine's dead body in the cave where he left her. He suggests that he had sex with her dead body. The English patient dug the Maddox's plane out of the sand, put Catherine's body in the plane, and took off. Oil got into the cockpit, and sparks lit the plane on fire. The English patient had to jump out of the plane because he was on fire. Caravaggio reveals that the English patient is indeed Almasy, but he decides in the end that it doesn't matter which side of the war he fought on. Caravaggio has grown fond of the English patient and doesn't see any reason to give British intelligence the burned mane. One day, Hannah is sitting in the kitchen when she sees Kip get his earphones, which he uses to talk to the military. He screams and falls to his knees. He then goes to his tent and comes back with a gun. He walks into the house, passes Hannah in the kitchen, and goes upstairs to the room of the English patient. Kip shoots at the pond outside the window and then points the gun at the English patient. Both Nagasaki and Hiroshima were wiped out by the two bombs that were dropped on Japan. When Hannah and Caravaggio walk in, the English patient tells Kip to kill Caravaggio. Caravaggio tries to tell Kip that the English patient isn't really English, but he won't listen. Kip says that anyone who drops a bomb on people of color is English. Caravaggio trips and falls into a chair close. He knows that Kip is right, these bombs would never be dropped on white towns. Kip puts the gun down and walks out of the house. He takes off his outfit and turban and ties a topknot in his long hair. He finds an old Triumph motorcycle that was hidden in the chapel and rides away from the house. Caravaggio is waiting near the door as he does this. He steps in front of Kip, stopping him, and hugs him before letting him go on his way. As Kip rides farther away from the war, Hannah writes to her stepmother Clara and gets ready to go home to Canada. Hannah can't quite remember the year, but she knows the date because it's the day after the bombs were dropped on Japan. If we can rationalize this, Hannah writes to Clara, we can rationalize anything. While the English patient is trying to sleep, he sees a dark figure in his room and hopes it is Kip. He stays up all night waiting for the figure to move, but it doesn't. After a few years, Kip moved to India. He is now a doctor with two kids and a laughing wife, but Hannah is still on his mind. In his thoughts, he can see her as a grown woman going about her life. Kip and his family are eating dinner when Hannah bumps into a cabinet in Canada and knocks a glass off a shelf. As the glass breaks Kip catches his daughter's dropped fork. About the author. Andatya was born in Colombo, Ceylon's capital, in 1943 to Mervyn and Doris Gratian. After his parents split up, he was raised by a family in Colombo. When Andatya was 11, he went to England with his mother and siblings to live with them. After high school, he went to college in London at Dulwich College. In 1962, he moved to Montreal, Quebec, Canada. In Quebec, Andatya went to Bishop's University and started getting his poems published through the university press. 
Andatya got his Bachelor of Arts degree from the University of Toronto in 1965. In 1967, he got his Master of Arts degree from Queen's University in Ontario. After college, Andatya taught at the University of Western Ontario in London and at Glendon College, York University. He also became known as a talented writer of fiction, nonfiction, and poems. The collected works of Billy the Kid, Andatya's book of poems, won the Canadian Governor General's Award for Artistic Achievement in 1970. From 1970 to 1990, he worked as an editor for Coach House Press, an independent Canadian publisher, where he helped find new Canadian talent. Coming through Slaughter, his first book, came out in 1976 and was awarded the Books in Canada First Novel Award. In 1988, Andatya was made an Officer of the Order of Canada. In 2016, he was given the highest honor in the order, which is Companion. The English Patient, which Andatya wrote in 1992, was one of his most popular books. That same year, it won the prestigious Booker Prize. The public and critics liked his next book, Anil's Ghost, which came out in 2001 a Canadian Literary Award called the Giller Prize. In 2005, Andatya was given the Sri Lanka Ratna, which is the highest honor Sri Lanka can give to a foreigner. He lives in Toronto with his wife, the Canadian author and Professor Linda Spaulding. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.